Hello, Josh from Feed Your Zebra here, and in this video, I'm going to give a quick overview on creating a label in Zebra Designer 2. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get File and New. We're going to start from scratch. Okay, the first thing we're prompted is to choose uh, the printer we're going to be using from the drop down list here. I'm pretty sure that when you plug the printer in, it should in automatically install the drivers. If not, they are available off Zebra's website. In this case, I'm going to be using the LP2824 Plus. So I'm going to choose this from the list. We don't just change any properties here. So we're just going to go to next. Okay, the next thing we're prompted to do is choose a predefined label format. There's a drop down list here, and we have a few of the more common label types used in this printer. Uh, but in this case, uh, the stock I'm using is not on this list. So we're just going to go to next. Okay, and then we're told to choose the paper side that paper size rather that best matches our needs. In this case I'm going to be getting the page size from the dimensions of the label I'm going to punch in in a couple of steps so I can just leave it as automatically set from label dimensions. Okay I don't think we need to change anything on this page for the purpose of this video so we just press next. Okay and this is where we need to put some information in. Okay I'm going to change the unit measurement to millimeters and what I need to do is now measure the label to get the correct sizes. So the region on the screen uh, corresponds to the label in the printer. So if you have the dimensions at hand, that's great. If not, all you need to do is measure it, but uh, make sure to actually measure the label and not the backing paper. Okay, so just give me a moment. I make it about 38 millimeters by 25.5. Okay, we only really need to change this margin stuff if when we actually do come to printing the label after calibration, it's still a little bit off center or a bit of a cut off, maybe at the top of the bottom. But I think it should be fine for now. And the row of labels we're using is just one column, one row. So that's great. Done. Okay, so let's start designing our label. I feel like making a label for a food product. So I'm going to make one for some bakewell tarts so we put that in there the text is fixed so this one won't change this area this field will be constant on all the labels okay and we also have the option of choosing a font from this drop down list we have all the standard um, windows fonts here as well as some zebra ones at the bottom the zebra ones are useful because if you want to upload the label to your printer to the onboard memory provided with it then the only fonts that will come as standard saved to it are these zebra ones. So for the purpose of this, let's just leave it like this. Keep the font same. Oh, let's make it a little bit bigger. This is going to the title. Okay. And okay. Right. We also have the option. I'll just show you what it looks like in a moment. So this is it in the moment. Let's get it down a little bit. When it's bright red, that means the text is still too big to fit on the label and it won't print okay there we go i think i'll that doesn't need to be plural and we also have this option just in the font here where it says inverse if we press this it will as you expect invert the colors so it looks like this um this can be useful but for the purpose of this i don't think it's necessary we also have some options up and down here where we can justify things so we can put in the center Oh, it just justifies it relative to other stuff already on the label. So yeah, can't really do much of these at the moment. We also have the option to rotate it. So say maybe if we can't fit the information on this way and we need to go along the other way, we can do that, which is fine. But yeah, I think uh, we'll just leave it like this for now. Okay, and uh, I think we should put another text box in. So we can yeah, we click on the drop down as well. We can choose these are the variable texts here. It's just a little shortcut to get to them. But I think just for this field at least, we can just leave it as fixed text. So let's put some allergy information in here. So it contains, as far as I know, eggs, milk, and almonds. Great. And for the sake of just because we can, let's change the font to Zebra CG try over it which is quite a nice one okay great a bit too big uh let's scale that down a little bit i think uh it's important allergy information is in bold that's fine right 
and finally I want to include some variable text for the best before date so we can get to it through here or alternatively we can also navigate through by clicking here and then choosing variable text here this will grey out this box here but that's normal go to next and for the purpose of a best before date we want a date field that's fine I'll go over these other ones in a future video they're all pretty useful okay and we've got lots of options for the format of the date I think for the purpose of this we don't need four digits in the years uh, columns that's fine offset the date by a couple of days because I like my big tarts nice and fresh and this is the preview of what it'll look like here we'll go to next and we have the option of putting a prefix or a suffix in and for the purpose of this I think having a prefix of best before would probably be a pretty smart idea when you put a space in okay and there we go and if we go into here we can then edit it we can maybe offset it by let's say for example you know three days and then you can see it's automatically changed it here great stuff all right well i hope that was helpful i will be making some more videos in the future on um how to format barcodes like i said some more stuff with the variable text exporting labels to the printers and uh, using Zebra Designer Pro to do some cool stuff such as getting information from a spreadsheet which will automatically populate some of these fields. Um, if you enjoyed and you will see more in the future, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.